Well, KB Lake is upon us. I'm a little bit late to the game on this one, but we've got another X99 motherboard. This is the 66X from ASRock. Wait, 66X. This is the ASRock X99 Gaming i7, and we're gonna take a look. Yeah, the ASRock X99 66X. My God, I'm an idiot. It's fine. I couldn't think of anything else, so. Uh, the, the other thing that I thought of, the other fun joke that I thought of is it comes with all kinds of SLI bridges. You know, you get your regular SLI bridge, your three-way SLI bridge, and your high-speed bridge. It's got more bridges than Jeff. I don't know, I'm sorry, it's really bad. I haven't had enough M&Ms. Clearly, I'm running low on M&Ms. Did you notice they're the festive M&Ms, red and green? The red could kind of go with the color scheme here. It's kind of nice. This motherboard uh, is a really interesting X99 motherboard. Um, the only real complaint that I have are the antennas. So this has a built-in, uh, you know, Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter, and it comes with these little rubber duck antennas, um, which means that the antennas are gonna stick out the back of your case. It would have been nice to include, you know, a um, like an external thing that you could set on top of your case or something like that. But all in all, it's really it's really not too bad. Uh, you've got eight RAM slots. Uh, the memory that we used for all of our testing was this Trident Z. This is the fastest kit of memory that I have right now. Uh, this is 3200. Yeah, this is 3200. I think I, I might have another kit somewhere that is 3400, but it's a little bit fiddly. This motherboard is rated for 3300 plus on the overclock. I had no trouble at all using the 3200. Actually, this, this kit of memory has been one of the most reliable in terms of basically you just plug it in and turn it on and it works across everything, not just Broadwell E. Let's take a look at the board layout. Um, the first thing that you notice is the three steel reinforced PCI Express by 16 slots. Now it's by 16 by 16 by eight electrical. Now depending on your CPU, depending on if you've got the, you know, the 28 lane CPU, um, the different sets of peripherals are enabled. There are two M.2 slots. One of those is an 80 millimeter M.2 and the other one is the full 110 millimeter M.2. If you're gonna use all the peripherals, you're gonna need a CPU that has all the PCI Express lanes. If you're only gonna use a few PCI Express peripherals or you know a couple of M.2 uh, yeah, drives, you may have to use an M.2 PCI Express adapter to give you a little bit more flexibility depending on which CPU you go with. Um, if you're gonna be running SLI and other PCI Express peripheral add-in cards, you're gonna have to get a 6850, which has more PCI Express lanes um, rather than the 6800. But if you're only gonna run one graphics card, a few peripherals, you know, maybe one peripheral and an M.2, a single M.2, then you're fine. But this does support dual M.2. You've got eight SATA 6 ports or six SATA 6 ports and one SATA Express port. There is one SATA Express, so you can use, you know, a SATA Express peripheral with this if you want or an external two and a half inch M NVMe rather than an M.2 NVMe. Although the new, you know, two gigabyte per second NVMe is really tempting to use with this board. Let's take a look at the back I.O. All right, at the back, we've got two USB 2.0 ports, our combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port. Then we've got our inbuilt 802.11 AC plus Bluetooth wireless solution. Now this wireless solution is not the strongest, you know, MIMO, three-way, anything like that. It's just a basic Wi-Fi solution. So if you want something more sophisticated than that, then you'll have to get an add-in card or, or something along that line. However, I found it to be a competent 802.11 AC um, chipset, so that worked really well. You've got USB 3.1 um, Type-C. This is provided by an AS Media controller and you've got four USB 3.0 ports. You've got dual Intel Gigabit NICs, and then you've got your audio solution. Now your audio solution is based around the Realtek ALC 1150, but it is designed for 115 dB signal to noise ratio. It does use Nishikon audio grade capacitors. It is a creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3 um, sound solution, but it's still using the Realtek ALC 1150 codec. So it's really a Realtek solution with the Sound Blaster Creative Labs software bundle. Depending on the game that you're using and, and what the requirements are of the game, that software bundle may be a little bit more premium. But in terms of the audio circuit, in terms of the audio circuit implementation, it is designed for 115 dB signal to noise ratio. This motherboard does have dual BIOS, so you can switch between the A BIOS and the B BIOS with the physical switch on the bottom. At the bottom edge of the board, we've got our Intel HD audio solution, a clear CMOS jumper, the BIOS AB switch I was mentioning before, your speaker, your front panel connections, your TPM header, a, an RS-232 serial port, two USB 2.0 headers in case you have internal peripherals like a power supply or something like that that is USB. Then we've got our SATA connections along the front, a fan header, two USB 3.0 headers, your ATX power connector, physical reset and physical power button, 
another fan header, a CPU fan header, and the 12 volt CPU uh, power connector. Then we've got our heat sink at the top of the board and and then there are two more fan headers just below the CPU, one turned horizontally and one turned vertically, depending on if you want to do a push-pull configuration or if you need front panel cooling or, or whatever like that that you might want to do. Uh, and then just below the RAM slots, there are two more SATA connections. So this motherboard has ample SATA connections. Let's get nerdy for a second and talk about the power delivery system on this motherboard. It's 12 phases. It's actually an ISL 6379 6 plus 1 true phase PWM driver but then they use ISL uh, 6611A phase doublers. So you get 12 phases for the CPU. There's also two separate phases um, for the RAM providing power to the RAM. Uh, this is a pretty clever approach actually. This method of doubling uh, gets its own driver um, through the 6611A. Each of the six phases from the primary driver gets its own phase. So what the effect of that is, is that the switching frequency is cut in half, which keeps the conversion efficiency pretty high. Overall, it worked really well. Now, I don't have any Broadwell E CPUs that'll overclock like crazy. I'm not really sure that any, <laughs> I've seen them. I've never touched one. It's kind of like a unicorn. Um, but the, the CPUs that I have, the, the best one can hit like 4.4 and be okay. I mean, 4.5 may be on a good day, but it's not exactly stable. But this motherboard had no problem overclocking the CPUs that I have to the best that they will do without having any kind of stability or voltage or nothing got excessively hot or anything like that. It is a six layer PCB design. So I have a feeling that, you know, routing and um, that sort of thing was not too much of an issue. Heat dissipation seems good. The heat sink seems pretty effective. Uh, the, the heat sink does get a little toasty. You know, the, the, the coils that we're talking about here are 60 amp coils each. So, you know, overall this thing is built for power delivery and that makes sense for, for Broadwell E. Now, I think Intel is probably going to refresh like in the next year or so, maybe, possibly. I don't know that for sure. But I still think X99 is a really solid platform if you need, you know, six cores. Yeah, Kaby Lake is upon us, but there's no six core Kaby Lake part. Yeah, I mean, there's some other stuff that may be going on, but still we're talking four cores. Six cores, eight cores, uh, especially when Zen is released. I think the price will fall out of the bottom of the eight core Intel part. For X99 and so that's something to keep an eye on. Overall this motherboard is really solid. Um, the only real complaint a lot of X99 motherboards also have you know more than three uh, PCI Express expansion slots. We do have the two by one slots but if you're running you know a by four peripheral like a capture card or something like that you're gonna have to put it in the bottom slot or if you're running it like an Intel PCI Express NVMe um, you're gonna have to use either the middle or the bottom slot because it's not gonna work in the in the by one slot. But this motherboard is designed for cost conscious people. And overall, the, the value that it delivers is tremendous. I mean, for the price point, for what you get, pretty good. Now, I kind of accidentally forgot about this motherboard on the test bench, and so it ended up running diagnostics for like three weeks, uh, burn in testing, like grueling torture test conditions, and it survived. So that's good. Whoops. Uh, yeah, so oh, overall, it was pretty stable. Um, the only complaint about the UEFI I have is that uh, Intel with Broadwell E has a favorite core. So like Intel designates which core is their favorite core in terms of overclockability. And as you probably already know, you can overclock the cores in Broadwell E independently, unlike some prior generation CPUs. Well, I couldn't tell in the UEFI how the UEFI designates which core is the favorite core. I have a feeling that they'll probably patch that in an upcoming UEFI update. While I was working on the motherboard, there were actually two or three UEFI updates, which has been pretty much the norm for any recent generation CPUs because they're moving at breakneck paces. So you know, there's gonna be a lot of software updates. So as soon as you get your board, before you install your operating system or do anything else, definitely update your UEFI because it's probably gonna solve some problems that you didn't even know you had. In terms of overall UEFI improvement, you know, ASRock has come a long way in the last two, three, four generations of boards. The UEFI on this is really polished. You've got full fan control um, in the UEFI. You've got full control of the board. There's a board explorer that lets you see which peripherals are plugged in. Um, when I was doing the testing, I was testing a PCI Express by one Intel Ethernet adapter uh, to go along with the two that were on board just because I needed to buy one peripheral. And uh, as I was moving it through the PCI Express by one slots, it was just on the test bench. It was not seated perfectly. And so <laughs> when I went in the board explorer, it was like, something is plugged in this slot, but I don't know what it is. And I looked at it, it's like, oh, sure enough, it's a skew. So that was really handy in, di in diagnosing that issue because I booted into Windows 
And device manager was like, I don't see another Intel adapter. And I was like, that's weird. I wonder why. And then I went to the board explorer and the UEFI and it's like, well, there's something in that slot, but I don't know what it is. So that was handy. Overall though, the UEFI has come a long way and it's really, really polished on this generation of motherboard. So if you're looking to do an X99 build, you should probably give this motherboard a look. You should probably also give a look to the Tai Chi. The Tai Chi is, is a very similar motherboard with a different audio solution. You know, if creative uh, is not something that you want in terms of audio, take a look at the Tai Chi. It's still based on the Realtek uh, ALC 1150 codec, but it's a little different implementation as far as the sound goes. Uh, the motherboard has a little different options with Tai Chi as well, but the board layout is almost identical. It's also a black and white color scheme versus red and black with this, but you know, overall works pretty well. If you got one of these or you're thinking about getting one of these, let us know in the forums. Let us know your experiences with it. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.